By now, most of you have heard the name Masa Amini. Masa. Sheena Amini. Masa Amini. A 22-year-old. 22-year-old Iranian Kurdish woman. Who was arrested and detained by the Iranian morality police. Her crime? Her crime? Improper head job. While in custody, she was dealt so many blows to her head that she fell into a coma and died two days later. <laughs> Since then, the people of Iran have poured into the streets demanding justice for Massa. Justice for Massa. Demanding justice for Massa. Women, life, freedom. The words chanted by Kurdish protesters after the death of Mahsa Jina Amini, no one could imagine the slogan shouted that day would so quickly spread across Iran and far beyond its borders. Uh, so following the death of Mahsa Jina, uh, it suddenly gave people some courage, right? That, that kind of demonstration, that demonstration of solidarity, it gave women courage. And I think that that was a, that was a very kind of turning point in, in the feminist movement in Iran. The first time I heard people across uh, Iran in different universities, people in the street, women in the street, uh, chanting, Zhenjian uh, Azadi, woman, life, freedom, or liberty, I was filled with Excitement. I actually was feeling like that I'm living uh, through a miracle. Soon after, university students and high school girls chanted the phrase while confronting the Islamic Republic security forces. Where did the slogan begin? The origins of the slogan Jinjian Azadi that we've been hearing echoing all around the world is rooted in the Kurdish women's freedom movement. It also represents the universal experience of Kurdish people in all four, four parts of Kurdistan, whether that's Turkey, Syria, Iran or Iraq, in the struggle for Kurdish recognition. We saw this being chanted in Syria against uh, Daesh, the so-called Islamic State, and against uh, Turkish invasions of northern Syria. And now we be, we're seeing this chanted on the streets of Iran, particularly in the Kurdish areas, by Kurdish women. And this is no excuse, this is no coincidence. Since the Islamic Revolution in 1979, Iranian women have been fighting against compulsory hijab. Six years ago, a group of women in the streets of Tehran removed their headscarves in protest, an act punishable by law. One of them was Azam Jangravi. The Iranian government pressured me and my family. They threatened to remove my daughter from my custody. I was given a three-year prison sentence. While on bail, Azam fled Iran and now lives in Toronto, Canada, where she has joined the protests in support of Iranian women. When I see those moments when a woman confronts a police officer, a woman standing up to demand her rights, like I stood up to demand my rights, I can say it's the most beautiful moment. It gives me hope that the next generation won't live like us. They will get their rights. Since the beginning of the unrest, women and men across Iran together chant women, life, freedom. This is the first time protests have been led by women and supported by men. The slogan has given hope to so many Iranians that this time around the protest might topple the regime or force the regime to change its policies.